uh, it's going to be slightly different replay. Uh, I didn't manage to, well, I've saved it, but um, because my replay library is full on Gran Turismo, basically I can't skip through the race or anything, so I'm not going to be able to get it under an hour long, which means that I might as well just stream it. So I won't be skipping through any pit stops or anything like that. We'll be seeing the whole race. Not that I skip that much time normally anyway, it's only a few minutes. But uh, once it's loaded up, we'll go from there and hopefully it all works and I don't make a tit of myself. So, we are about to watch the Simifex one hour endurance race from Tuesday night from the Pro-Am class. And uh, this week we're at Suzuka Raceway in, um, I nearly said Germany then, in Japan. So, without much further ado, we'll give it a quick pause, set everything up, bear with me, that's what I have to do normally before you all see it, and um, what else, da -da 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 -da. that's it, I just need to skip up to Skid Guru probably, so without much further ado, we'll go through the qualifying order, so Skid Guru, after half an hour's qualifying session, put it in pole position, with a very, very fast lap, so a good job from Skid around Suzuka there. We've got Diablo from Australia in second place in the BMW. We've got Ickle Pants in third place. We've got ADG123 in fourth place now. Hello, whoever's joined me. We've got Simifex Ginger Tim in fifth place. We've got Specky Jock in sixth place. Phoenix in seventh. Steve Stones in eighth. Moulson, the French Moulson in ninth, Broad, never uh, can never pronounce the rest of it, in 10th, Bikuni in 11th, and a new guy that just joined us this week, I think he's been moved up from the, let me think what it is, the amateur category uh, into Pro-Am, so he's had a, a, a qualifying session with us guys which are faster than what he's used to and he's ended up in 12th place so anyway without much further ado i'm gonna hit start and uh, i've got no notes i haven't been able to skip through and watch it so we're just literally going to capture whatever i can capture and commentate on whatever i see so without much further ado press start and we will wait for skid guru to get underway cross the line and then we'll skip through and see what everyone's up to I did consider leaving my camera on so you could see my smiling face the whole way through, but it doesn't really add anything to the video, so I thought I'd turn it off. Unless you're obviously sexually attracted to me, in which case that might be the only reason you tuned in. So sorry to disappoint you. Anyway, back to the racing. Decent start from everyone as it's a rolling start. Not too much trouble from these rolling starts normally. Not everyone's uh, favourite way of starting, but at the same time, it works quite well to separate the group um, just so that you're not side by side into T1 with an hour long race in front of you. So we've got a, a Lexus right at, up front in first place and then a few Beamers behind it chasing away. We'll quickly skip through everyone, see what everyone's up to. Ginger Tim having a decent qualifying this week and uh, sees himself in the mid pack to start off with. The week before at uh, Kyoto Driving Park, Tim managed to put it in first place. So we see up front Skid Guru going a little bit deep into the left hand hairpin there. Probably outbroke himself a little bit on lap one with cold tyres. And uh, Diablo has now jumped into first place, taking that position off him. And now Skid Guru has got a bit of pressure from Ickle Pants right behind him. So, uh, We'll keep an eye on this little battle. I'm not ignoring everyone else behind, but um, there's already a change for position in the first uh, lap up front, so might as well try and capture it. Plus, I've got no notes, so I don't know where I'm skipping at what time anyway, so I'm just going to skip through and hope that I catch stuff. So we've got Equal Pants now making a move uh, side by side with Skid Guru. Down the inside as I head into 130R, so good move there from Ickle Pants because he couldn't open up the uh, entry into the corner as much as he probably probably would have liked so uh, had to take a bit of a shallow entry into there but still managed to run it nice and fast through 130R and uh, 
get second place off Skid Guru. So Skid Guru having a bit of a bad first lap and dropping down two places. We'll skip further down the field, see what's going on. We've got Ginger Tim right in the back of me. Looking for an overtake, but he's put himself on the outside, so he's uh, going to struggle around T1. Certainly not a corner you'd want to go around the outside on. Specky uh, watching us from a bit of distance behind now. Specky in the BMW as well. Got Phoenix behind in seven. Closely chased by Steesons. Mulson all the way from France in ninth. Broad in tenth now. I should have written down the qualifying positions. I'm saying he's in tenth now. He might have been in tenth anyway. So I've already messed it up by not writing that down. B. Kune in eleventh. And K2 just having his own little race really, sussing us out and uh, just keeping himself to himself at the back. So we'll skip through, see where the action's at. It looks like Steve Stearns is quite back, uh, quite close to the back of uh, Phoenix, putting a bit of pressure on from a distance. Spit of flames from the side ex exit exhaust of the uh, AMG there. Tim has got past Phoenix now. Phoenix punting him back down. Going for the inside himself for 130 R now. Gain sixth place before actually getting to the apex. So Tim does the right thing, just gives him room and uh, gives him the place back more or less. Trying to minimize as much time loss as possible. So Phoenix back up in sixth, good maneuver. Decent start to the race, so we're two laps in, start a lap three now. The Ginger Tim right on the back of Phoenix still, he's not giving it up. We'll skip a bit further up, see what's going on. Got me right on the back of uh, Speckett. The advantage of looking at my car is that we've actually got a proper on board with the, uh, the internal view to look at. Which is always uh, a bit different for the replays. Bit of a different view to skip to. You see my uh, big mirror in the middle of the car there on the dash, which is uh, looks like pretty much an iPod. Is uh, Phoenix with his lights on and his big yellow front bumper all over me. But if we look back, uh, Phoenix looks like he's got a bit of trouble as well from Steve So uh, Good close race in his first opening laps. Not quite bumper to bumper stuff, but not letting the guys in front uh, pull away too much. So the uh, top positions are still the same, Diablo in first, Ickle Pants in second and Skid Guru in third. We'll check in on them uh, shortly. So just keeping it nice and tidy in this opening uh, five minutes, it's just gone six minutes. And again, there'll be a few more uh, skipping up and down the field in this, just because, like I say, I haven't written down the notes and uh, and got anything to uh, go go from. So I'm just trying to catch the action as I see it. We've got Ginger Tim now dropped back uh, a little bit. He's ended up in 10th place, but we see him make a nice move there on Broad. Just Broad got the line a little bit wrong uh, through T1 there which is almost like two corners but um, I think it is just classed as one corner because it's just one big corner that you link together but it's almost like two separate breaking zones Another thing I've forgotten to do in my haste is uh, print out the track map so I've got no corner names to refer to but there you go 
I try and keep it amateur so no one ends up paying me. So Ginger Tim's dropped uh, Broad massively now. We're joined Broad. So that's the unfortunate timing that we always uh, seem to get in these replays. So join Broad just as he gets massive over here and uh, puts it into the wall. So Broad dropping even further back now. Cooney's gone past him. Um, so yeah, he'll have to get going and uh, see if he can get himself back into the race. Bit of a shame it's so early on and he's made that mistake. But you can argue that's uh, that's a good thing because uh, at least you get a chance to have another crack at it. If you have a mistake with uh, two minutes left of the race, uh, you don't really get another chance. So we'll skip up to Molson, chasing Steve Stones. Steve Stones now chasing Phoenix, which he has been for a while. Phoenix uh, drops back a little bit from me now, and I'm slowly but surely uh, reeling in Specky Jock. There is a moment I actually want to catch uh, rather selfishly of my own um, where I managed to get past Specky Jock and uh, it felt like when I was driving, I know these things can look different on replay videos, it felt like when I was driving that it was uh, a close one just to uh, get it done and pull in front of him and take the corner. Felt like I, uh, I nearly cut across the front of him to do it. So uh, I'd like to see that back, I think it'll be coming up shortly. As you can see, I'm getting closer and closer to uh, Specky's rear bumper. Not quite fast enough just to uh, make it up in a couple of corners though, so it might take a lap or two, but gradually catching Specky. Specky doing a good job, mind, not making mistakes, so uh, having to put in the effort to go and catch him, it's, uh, it's always my favourite part of the race when I've got someone quite close in front of me any race that's my favorite bit when someone's quite close in front of me that's when uh, i really start enjoying myself and i start chasing the guy in front and I, i've noted over the years i seem to just try I just, I, my skill level seems to improve slightly so uh, i might i might might have been going around on my own and a bit of a boring race struggling away and then all of a sudden if i catch someone or someone drops back and there's someone quite close in front of me to chase then uh, I just seem to be able to pick up that pace. Not always, but more often than not. So I'm getting side by side now. Uh, oh, that's not the one. So Specky having a bit of a moment through uh, through there and uh, losing it, going wide. And if you go wide through that corner, there's, uh, it's not that easy to come back from. So we've got Phoenix and Mulson side by side. Phoenix liking his inside overtakes into uh, 130 yard wisely so though if you've got the pace and it looks like he has looks like he's either getting a good run out of uh, spoon or he's he's um he's just got the top end speed on the mulson towards the end of the straight um coming into 130r so uh, one or the other i'm not sure what's going on but good racing either way Ginger Tim uh, coming into the pits. I nearly did my instinctive thing of flicking to the skip button then. So we won't bother watching the pit stop. Unfortunately, sorry Tim. We'll see what else is going on and just see. Uh, oh, so we've got Ipple Pants right on the back of Diablo now, challenging for first place. So this could be quite an interesting battle. I've not watched this replay back as well. Um, so I've no idea really what happens other than my own race. So. Should be quite an interesting one to see it for the first time and uh, watch it unfold this week in front of me. I think it gives a slightly different replay um, back, if I'm honest. A replay video because um, I've genuinely got surprised to see what happens because I, 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 I don't know. I've got a couple of laps that have been called out to me by a few people um, to, to look at. So one of them being uh, lap seven, which we're coming up to shortly from Mulson and uh, a couple of other ones later from different people. But yeah, other than that, it's, uh, everything's a surprise that I see. So, Hickle Pants now getting the run, Slipstream, oh, so decided he don't want to try it through 130R, not as brave as Phoenix, uh, we've seen Phoenix already. Or you could argue wiser than Phoenix. <laughs> no offence, Phoenix. But uh, we've seen Phoenix pull it off cleanly twice already, so fair play to him. But Ickle Pants, 
slightly different strategy there and uh, decided not to take the risk through 130R even though he had the run on him so just sat back in, uh, just lifted off and sat in behind Diablo and he's doing the same thing again so you, it's uh, good of Ickle Pants to uh, be respectful like that but makes you wonder what his true pace could have been um, and what gap he could have, he could have maybe got. So uh, yeah, interesting to see actually that Ickle Pants not not that confident to go for the dive, but uh, certainly a very capable and competent racer all in all. But yeah, I'm quite interested by that one. Hopefully uh, that interests some other people. The skid doing a good job in third place, just running around on his own now a little bit. Bit of a shame he dropped out of first place, but just had a bit of a, a mistake and. Uh, and drop back so it's not too bad though still on the podium at the moment I've gained a little bit of a lead uh, from Steve Stones but dropped off the back of Skid Guru in third so it's all uh, breaking up a little bit this race now we need to watch Mulson I forgot about that uh, it's lap 7 now Mulson chasing Steve Stones trying to take that 5th place uh, move his way through the field Love the way that Mercedes in front spits the flames and it's really obvious because it comes out the side of the car rather than the back. So Molson, let's see what Molson does into 130R, so taking a similar approach to Ickle Pants, probably not quite close enough but it would have been a risky one that, so uh, that was wise from Molson in my opinion that time round. I'm in mean, a bit of a moment as uh, he knows he's got to give uh, Steve Stones a bit of a room, bit of room should I say, and then got a touch of oversteer with Molson but he's still got the job done, Specky Jock very respectful and uh, leaving room for Molson to come through, at the same time not making it too easy for him. So we've got Diablo now, uh, Ickle Pants has actually taken first place and Diablo looks like he's had a bit of a mistake, I've missed it but he's dropped back and uh, he's getting hustled now by Skid Guru. Guru must be uh, thinking that's pretty lucky for him. He's doing a good job though. I've noticed over the weeks uh, Skid Guru just seems to be quite a patient driver so you don't see him just going for a dive just because he's close to the guy in front, he, uh, he waits for his opportunity and uh, calculates when he's probably his best chance. Obviously everyone makes mistakes, I'm sure we've seen uh, a few mistakes from Skid Guru as well, I'm not saying he's perfect but he uh, all in all is quite, seems like quite a calm calculated uh, driver with the moves that he makes. So we've got Molson now in fifth place. Uh, looking at me in the distance and really me in and it was as well I remember looking at the um, the delta times that are provided in the race that for some reason they never show up in the replay but uh, it'd be quite handy if they did to be honest but um, yet they don't so I remember in the race I remember Molson were just getting closer and closer lap after lap they were taking about a second out of me uh, a lap at one point and then uh, it got worse and worse I, I actually calculated I could do another lap and still just about managed to uh, pit in front of him and not give the satisfaction to him uh, of actually getting the overtake on me. <laughs> so I was going to, uh, if it did actually get right up behind me, it, it should have been towards the end of the lap and uh, I'd have just pitted in front of him. <laughs> so we have a bit of a laugh between us lot, so it's only in good nature. Just to take that satisfaction away, like I say, of getting the overtake on me. Steve Stone's pitting now on the, towards the end of lap 8. Phoenix has uh, pitted, gone onto the medium tyre. We've missed his pit stop but starts lap 9 uh, on the mediums and uh, he's now in 7th place as he gets uh, a few positions whilst people are in the pits. Steve Stone's, bit of a gap to uh, Phoenix now. Uh, not, um, 
Yeah, Phoenix, sorry. And then Ginger came a bit of a gap to ski stones. And it's all, uh, it's all looking pretty mundane at the back, I'm afraid. But Specky, not, they, uh, he's not dropped off too far away from Molson, but overall looks like Molson's got the pace. So, like I say, Molson just really mean at this point. We've got lap 11, which uh, Tim requested we uh, join in for. I do that, I remind myself on lap 9 and then I'll completely forget now because I think I've we'll reminded myself and I can't go wrong So I'm completely aware that that uh, more sun's on my uh, tail and catching me up at this point so I'm trying to push as hard as I can on my worn tyres We skip to me You see my tyres are pretty worn and I'm on the super softs Molson on the softs, not quite as bad wear on the front. Excuse me, I'm going to have a quick sip of juice. Check back in on the Skid Guru and Diablo, see what the gap's like. They were pretty close to each other last time round. Looks like Diablo's either done a really good job and uh, pulled away. For some reason we've got no lap times on the right-hand side there for Diablo, despite the fact we're on lap 10. But yeah, he's managed to pull away um, from Skid Guru a little bit. And, uh, or Skid Guru's had a bit of a mistake, I'm not sure what. See me uh, sliding it in there. Looks quite good. Molson now getting closer and closer, like I've said. So this is the point where I'm thinking, right, I'm pitting this lap, I'm pitting this lap, he's not having me. But then he does that, he just pushes too hard on the exit, trying to catch me, and uh, ends up planting it in the wall, and as we can see, he's picked up uh, front aero damage, front left suspension damage as well. So, uh, it's lucky he's, he's not at the beginning of the lap, but at the same time he's, uh, he's uh, still got about half a lap to go. We're just trying to work it out then, sorry. <laughs> so it's pretty crucial uh, when you pick up damage, obviously. No one wants to pick up damage, but when you do, it's pretty crucial where you are on the track. So you don't end up wasting a full lap. Or, if you do end up wasting uh, a bit of time, then you see if it feels much different and if you're losing time, see what your sector times are saying and stuff like that, so you can compare and maybe think, oh, it's not actually as bad as I thought, I can stay out. So damage isn't necessarily as bad as you think, but sometimes it is. So you've got to make the call at the time, really, depending on how bad you think it is. Specky Joke taking first place, whilst Equal Pants comes out in Second, Phoenix uh, pitted early onto the medium, so Phoenix, oh, Diablo comes out in third, sorry. Phoenix uh, comes down the straight and takes fourth place. Steve Stone takes fifth. Skid Guru comes out of the pits now in sixth place. Uh, Ginger Tim in seventh, and I've come out of the pits, we all pitted on the same lap more or less, in eighth place. We see Mulson now repairing his car in the pits, uh, coming out in Ninth place, so good job there from Molson and Big Kuna in 10th, KZ2 Haas in uh, 11th. Cuz, we'll call you, cuz. Anyway, let's uh, skip back up, skip the camera angle a little bit, get some kind of perspective to see how close everyone is and check out what's going on again. So we've got Specky. Probably on incredibly worn tyres, yep. On the uh, soft at the front, interesting to see, he's gone super soft at the back, so he's actually mixed up the tyres. Uh, you don't often see people doing that, even though I know it's an option to do, but um, I never really do it myself either, so. Interesting to see that Specky's done that, though. 
Ickle Pants uh, in second place. Chasing him down with his fresh tyres. Shouldn't find it too much of a problem. Diablo in third. Bit of a distance away from Ickle Pants now. Phoenix uh, is in a quite a good position now in fourth because his uh, tyres have gone off a little touch. Not much at all. He's just taking the edge off him, but uh, he's on the medium tyre, so his tyre wear will go down, obviously, a lot slower than everyone else's. It's probably his fuel that's uh, going to run out faster than his tyres do. Steve Stones are pretty close behind him. Not actually caught that much action since the start, so hopefully we'll, uh, we will do now. Everyone's a bit closer together again. Just skipping through again, trying to keep an eye on what's going on. So we'll keep an eye on the Phoenix and uh, Steesterns. And in the distance we can see how Diablo... Di Diablo? Diablo does. Diablo. Doing a good job through that tight twisty bit where it's all uh, just little lifts and half throttle and this that and the other curing the understeer trying to carry the pace it's a tricky set of corners is that first section and Steve Stone's doing a good job of uh, chasing Phoenix closely through that oh it's a bit unfortunate he's done that though so he runs a little bit wide on the exit of Degna, one, uh, Degna 2 I'm going to say I'm probably completely wrong um, but yeah Ends up getting a bit, a bit of oversteer because of uh, running wide onto the curb. Um, so quite a few people get past there. Me, uh, Ginger Tim, and Skid Guru. So that's uh, done quite a few people a favour. Unfortunate for Sea Stones, obviously. So we've got Skid Guru chasing Phoenix now. Phoenix having a little moment of oversteer, but caught it nicely mid corner. Probably lost a little bit of momentum because of that though. But it doesn't look like it actually. Looks like he's uh, got the pace on Guru and he's actually pulling away a little bit. Heavy on the brakes. Down three or four gears depending on what gearing setup you've got. Oh, this is a moment. Oh no, I'm on the wrong person. No. Oh. I went into the back of Ginger Tim there, <laughs> he went off track, uh, came back on track, a bit squiffy as I would uh, as I would call it, so I pitted just two laps ago and I'm straight back in the pits because I picked up damage. So as you can see my tyres are absolutely fresh and for some reason I pressed, I pressed for new tyres as well so I wasted time when I picked up, I didn't actually need new tyres, I just needed to fix the damage. So I wasted a bit of time but I did pretty much two pit stops in a row. So I'm quite glad, although we didn't see the actual incident, I've caught a little bit of that to explain what went on. Ginger Tim, I'm blaming that. With a bit of jest, I, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not one for um, really pointing my finger unless there's something seriously bad that was uh, completely avoidable that happened. But uh, it was just one of them moments. Ginger Tim probably read it a little bit wrong, I probably read it a little bit wrong, and... Uh, it resulted in a bit of uh, contact, so I've missed yet another overtake. Skid Guru just got past Phoenix. After the after the uh, pit stop, Skid Guru's uh, done a really good job of coming through, and uh, he's nicely and quite quickly dispersed of uh, Phoenix. I'd be surprised if Phoenix, uh, no offence to him, but can catch up and uh, keep up to him on the medium tyre. Ginger Tim carrying uh, rear damage now because uh, I ended up unavoidably going into the back of him. It was only a really, really light touch because uh, we were going through the, the last corner, which, uh, as most of you know, is a pretty tight one. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was relatively slow contact, but still gave us damage. So, B. Cooney's raised an interesting point this uh, week about damage and the fact that it's inconsistent and. Uh, you can have quite a hefty shunt with someone but um, sometimes the person who should get the damage doesn't and vice versa and there's all sorts of flaws with it basically and uh, 
for example, that one between me and Ginger Tim, I've had harder crashes where I haven't picked up damage. And that was a light little touch on the back of Tim's car. It didn't really actually make that much difference. But it did damage us both, so it's just so inconsistent. And Cooney raised it as a, a very valid point this week. It is really frustrating, but unfortunately, if we're going to keep playing on the Gran Turismo Sport, there's not a lot we can do about it unless we uh, go down the route of turning damage off. And I don't, I'm not sure any of us really want want to race in an hour, hour long endurance league where damage isn't an issue, especially on the uh, the tighter tracks where hitting the barriers and the walls is um, crucial to having a good, you know, with avoiding the barriers and the walls, should I say, is crucial to having a good race. You wouldn't get that reward quite as much if there was no damage on uh, as someone who's practiced and put a lot of effort and time into making sure that they've got the setup to be able to drive a one hour race without hitting a wall, basically. So it'd be a bit unfair in that regard, but obviously it'd be completely even for everyone, so it wouldn't but it would make, uh, I, I feel that it bring the driving standards down a little bit. I know everyone's still capable of the same standard of driving. I'm not sure where to go here, so I keep skipping through. I do apologise. Um, I'll stick with myself briefly as I chase moves on. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. Mulsom running wide. And uh, as we've already seen Specky Jock do earlier, it's pretty hard to get yourself back on the track if you do that. Specifically through that corner. For some reason it's uh, slightly off camber I guess and being on the Astra turf which lines the outside of the corner. Uh, there's next to no grip so you just understeer even further off the track as soon as you get on that green stuff. So uh, yeah, I guess that's why it sucks you further and further off and uh, that sounded rude, but... But yeah, that's my little explanation anyway. I'll have to actually pay attention and see if it is off camber. Even though I race here, I don't really pay too much attention for that kind of stuff. I know I should do. But it's just uh, a driver track more intuitively rather than thinking about it too much. stick with myself all day. I don't know what to watch. I'll be honest. Oh, we've got Phoenix with the back marker right behind him of uh, KZ. See how KZ beat, uh, fares against Phoenix and see if we can keep up for a little bit. Skip up the camera angle and see what's going on. I feel like I, I'm probably missing some of it. Oh, join Phoenix actually as it goes wide through that same corner we saw Mulson, Specky Jock, and I did it at one point as well. So Specky is going to take the place now. Phoenix is pretty much parked on the corner. I come through right behind Specky. Specky has a moment of oversteer as uh, he has to avoid Phoenix. God knows what Phoenix were doing then, but he seems to be just parked on the corner for a a second or two. Oh, I've got all, everything wrong as we're going to here. So this is how Overtaker was on about. Just just about pulled in front of Specky Jock to take 130 half flat out and uh, just get the overtake done. So I've just about missed that as well, but managed to catch it in the uh, latter stage. Oh, what the hell? Ah, oh, right. Um, okay. Right, so that's the replay. Uh, yeah. Don't know the finishing positions. <laughs> I don't know uh, anything about it. So, yeah. Go check out Sim FX. Um, that's uh, caught me out a bit. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, bollocks. Now I shouldn't have streamed it. Um, yeah, what am I going to do? Well, I guess I can sit here on my phone and then fill you in with the results eventually when I find them. Oh, I missed a call of someone. Oh. Uh, they weren't being updated. Oh, this is 
actually caught me out a bit, I'll be honest. So I've no idea <laughs> who finished where. Um, other than myself. Oh, in fact, I think I did. I think I stuck a screenshot. So if I just got a screenshot and said, wherever that is. Uh, where's my controller? Sorry, you see me panic slightly here. Yeah. Where would that be then? Oh, it's just in my. Oh. Does it show that on my stream? I don't know if it will. Does it show that? So, the finishing results anyway, after that terrible ending. Fuck me. <sighs> Sorry about swearing. Ickle Pants in first place. Diablo in second. Sim Effect Skid Guru in third. This is the finishing results, by the way. Oh, and I'll give you the gaps as well, since uh, it'll give you some kind of story to what, uh, what happened. So, Ickle Pants um, won the race in his M6 with an 11.6 second gap to Diablo in second place. Uh, Diablo having a decent race, but it's quite a big gap. Skid Guru right behind Diablo. Oh, is that plus again? Oh, I don't know. And then uh, me in fourth, A to G. Specky Jockey in fifth. Mulson in sixth. Sim Effects, Ginger Tim in seventh. Phoenix in eighth. Steve Stones in ninth. Big Cooney in tenth. Uh, KZ in eleventh. And Broad is the final finisher in 12th and as we see right at the bottom there we've got fastest lap from specky jock is uh, a 159.039 so on lap 26 towards the end of the race so suspicions are amongst us that there is a, a point on offer for this fastest lap so a few people actually wait right till the end put on some super softs with low fuel and uh, go for it which uh, there's no problem in doing. It's a good idea, but not personally, I didn't go at it myself yet. So anyway, without much further ado, I'm going to pretty much end it there. Thank you for watching and tuning in. Um, yeah, I really apologise about that ending and not showing the rest of the race. I thought I had the full replay, but I guess uh, Phoenix pointed it out on the chat the other night. I've got to delete some replays so I can save some more, basically. So I'll do that right now. And uh, yeah, bit of a disappointment that ending, but there you go. That's life. All right. Take care. Speak to you soon. Oh, wrong button. I hate it when I do that. I say bye and then I can't bloody leave. No, wrong button again. Eh? All right, yeah. Oh, it's because I need to go back. All right. Fuck me, I'm good at this stuff. So professional. Right, now I'm going. <laughs> See you again.